Welcome to our service. We are now in June and all our churches are back in person and we hope to see you there sometime over the next weeks. There is a service this week and next and then we shall publish the links by which you can share in the worship of one of our churches, perhaps Woolworth or Peckham, that both stream their Sunday morning worship. In these last weeks, we are reminded of the beginnings of the church, how frightened disciples become bolder apostles, how people who want to live in Christ share in worship and learning, fellowship, service and much else besides. Christians have been doing this over the centuries, including within our own Methodist tradition with John Wesley preaching in the fields and the town squares, as well as in churches, with the result that the church found new expressions and identities. We shall think about that today in our service as we face the big challenge of working out how to be a church in a changed and changing world. Let's join together in our first hymn.
So let's join together in our first prayer. Let us pray. We give thanks to God for his love in Christ, through whom we have found peace and hope and joy. Loving God, we praise you. We give thanks for calling us together into the life of the church to build one another up in faith and to empower us to serve him in the world. We give thanks for those who shared the gospel in each generation and for partic particularly for the people called Methodists and for those who have influenced our lives. We give thanks for all the faithful people who have served him here in this place and particularly those that we remember, those that we love and who have loved us and through whom we first glimpsed God's love in Christ. And we give thanks for all who share in Christ's ministry now, for their vision and leadership, their friendship and care, their energy and insight. May our thankfulness show itself not only in what we say, but also in what we do. For we ask our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Let's join together in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Our first reading. This is a reading from Matthew chapter 25, verses 34 to 36 and verse 40. Come, you who are blessed by my Father. I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. When did we see you like this? I tell you, Whenever you did this for any of your sisters and brothers, you did it to me. As we reflect on what it means to be the church, I draw on some extracts from the words and work of John Wesley. We are not wanting to turn back the clock, but learn from the way in which John Wesley spoke to his time with such an effect that people, often for whom church meant little, came to a faith in Christ. We need no reminding that our world may seem far away from God. Perhaps we do not feel too confident in addressing those who are beyond our walls. We cannot copy Wesley's methods. They were appropriate for his time. But we can learn how to make an authentic response to be faithful in our discipleship and our witness. But what was it that freed John Wesley from being stuck in the traditions of his day, liberating him to find a new voice and new ways of encourage peop encouraging people to grow in faith? God started with him, not just at Aldersgate Street, but it was a significant time, according to his own words. 
let's remind ourselves. He writes this in his journal, May the 24th, 1738. In the evening, I went very unwillingly to a society in Aldersgate Street, where one was reading Luther's preface to the Epistle to the Romans. About a quarter before nine, while he was describing the change which God works in the heart through faith in Christ, I felt my heart strangely warmed. I felt I did trust in Christ, Christ alone for salvation, and an assurance was given me that he had taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. And after my return home, I was much buffeted with temptations, but I cried out and they fled away. They returned again and again, but he sent me help from his holy place. And herein, I found the difference between this and my former state chiefly consisted. I was striving, yea, fighting with all my might under the law as well as under grace. But then I was sometimes, if not often, conquered. Now I was always conqueror. We join together in our next hymn, Ye Servants of God. Ye servants of God, your master proclaim and publish abroad his wonderful name, the name of victorious of Jesus Christ. When we think about being church today, we talk about our calling, and it is expressed in four ways. Look at the membership ticket, worship, learning and caring, service, and evangelism. We respond in worship within our local church, sharing together in its life and sacraments, and through our personal prayer. Listen to some words which come from one of John Wesley's sermons. It's called The New Life. He says this. 
As soon as we are born of God, there is a total change in our lives. The eyes of understanding are opened and we see the light of the glory of God. Our ears being opened, we're now capable of hearing the inward voice of God saying, your sins are forgiven. We feel in our hearts the mighty working of the Spirit of God. We feel the peace that passes all understanding. All our spiritual senses are then working to discern good and evil, and we may properly be said to live alive to God in Jesus Christ. We are called not only to worship, but to give attention to God in the way in which we learn and care for one another. And so through Bible study and meeting for fellowship, we have the opportunity to grow in faith and to support others in their journey. And John Wesley learned this lesson when he was studying at Oxford. In one of his letters, he writes this. In November 1729, when I came to live at Oxford, as students we agreed to spend three or four evenings in a week together, and our design was to read over the classics which we had beforehand read in private on common nights, and on Sunday some book in divinity. In the summer following, William Morgan told me that he had called at the jail to see a man who was condemned for killing his wife, and that, from the talk that he had had with one of the debtors, he believed that it would be beneficial if others too would join in speaking with them. And so it was that Charles, my brother, and I, on the 24th of August 1730, walked down with him to the castle. We were so well satisfied with our conversation there that we agreed to go again once or twice a week, which we had not done long before he'd asked me. And on August the 31st, to go with him to see a poor woman in the town who was sick. In this visiting too, when we came to reflect upon it, we believed that it would be worthwhile to spend an hour or two a week providing that the minister of the parish in which any such person was, was not against it. Worship, study, fellowship and pastoral care all together are an integral part of what it means to be church. We join together in singing another of Wesley's hymns, O Thou Who Camest From Above. Oh, 
our calling invites us to be a good neighbour in the community, to challenge injustice and use our resources to support the church in its mission in the world. And this commits us to service, doing all the good we can, by all the means we can, in all the ways we can, in all the places we can, and at all the times we can, to all the people we can, as long as ever we can. Now these words are attributed to John Wesley and they certainly reflect his thinking and his energy. He also wrote some rules for those who were to be helpers in the church, wise instructions for those that he wanted to share in the church's work. They're written in the first minutes of the conference in 1744 and our Methodist conference will be meeting this time in Birmingham a little later on this month. Wesley's words are these. In your service, be diligent. Never be unemployed for a moment. Spend no more time at any place than is strictly necessary. Be serious. Let your motto be holiness unto the Lord. Believe evil of no one. Put the best construction on everything. Speak evil of no one. Keep your thoughts within your own breast till you come to the person concerned. Tell everyone what you think wrong in him or her, and that plainly, and as soon as may be, else it will fester in your heart. Be the servant of all. Take no money of anyone. Let there be no pretense to say that we grow rich by the gospel. And be punctual. Do everything exactly at the time. And in general, do not mend our rules, but keep them for conscience sake. Act in all things, not according to your own will, but as a child of the gospel. As such, it is your part to employ your time in visiting the flock from house to house, the sick in particular, in such a course of reading, meditation and prayer at those times and places which we judge most for his glory. Our calling invites us to work out our faith in daily life and to share Christ with others. Our faith makes a difference to our lives. Others can see it. But of course, we need to be ready to be able to tell our story. And this can be done in our own ways. It needs to be authentic. For John Wesley, he was able to write and he was also able to hold a crowd in his preaching. But what was new for him was to preach in the open fields. And so for us, it may well be that using something like the format we are using for our worship today, using social media, which is perhaps unfamiliar to us. But of course, we found particularly through this year, it's been the way in which we can connect together and proclaim the gospel still. Listen to what John Wesley said about field preaching. In the evening, I reached Bristol and I met Mr. Whitfield there. I could scarce recon my, reconcile myself at first to his strange way of preaching in the fields, of which he set me an example on Sunday. And in the following week, with Mr. Whitfield being gone, I began expounding our Lord's Sermon on the Mount. One pretty remarkable precedent in field preaching to a little society which was accustomed to meet once or twice a week at Nicholas Street. John Wesley wrote those words in his journal in 1739. Finding words and language for this time and place is what we pray to God for his spirit to enable in us. Let us pray. Gracious God, 
We pray for your church throughout the world and for our circuit here in Southwark and Deptford. Bless those who lead, that they may be firm in faith and humble before you. Bless those who teach, that they may increase our understanding and be open to your word in them. Bless those who minister healing, that they may bring wholeness to others and know healing in themselves. Bless those through whom you speak, that they may proclaim your word in power and have their ears open to your gentle whisper. Bless those who, in their work, live for you. Fulfil your purposes in them. And help us all to seek your kingdom first in the complexity of our daily lives. And bless those who feel they have no gifts. For those who do not feel valued. For those who are powerless by the world's standards that they may share their experience for the good of us all. And bless us all in our life together, that we may build each other up in faith and hope and love, and be faithful in our worship, witness and service. Gracious God, you are our Father and we are your children. Our neighbours are our sisters and our brothers in Christ. To their service and to your glory we dedicate ourselves and as a people and as individuals strengthen our resolve to stand fast in your faith, to seek the help of your Holy Spirit and to work willingly for your kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In Wesley's words, our final hymn, Forth in thy name, O Lord, I go. Oh, we
And so we join in saying the words of the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.